The Arizona Cardinals need to do better around Kyler Murray. He's 26 years old. He could be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and I am here to prove that he can be. So in today's video, I have a single season to make the Arizona Cardinals a super team around Kyler Murray. He has to finish in the top three of the MVP, and they have to make a playoff run, maybe to the Super Bowl. We will see, but this video is presented by the EA Creator Network. Now, as we hop into franchise mode and look at the Arizona Cardinals, remember, this is work in progress gameplay. So you might be seeing a bug or something here or there. But just keep in mind, it is not the full retail version. EA gave me early access. The Cardinals, though, have a lot of speed, but not a lot else. They got Marvin Harrison Jr., which should help out Kyler. But this team needs a whole lot more help. Now, when you first hop into Madden's franchise mode, you're going to notice that they've redone kind of the entirety of what you're going to see up front. You can kind of move the right stick to the left or right. And you kind of see we get our matchup for the week. We can then see sort of our matchup details about which players look out for on both sides of the ball. Uh, we get our standings. We get, you know, ability to see our goals on the right stick as well going up and down. Let you see the new top stories menu, which gets you a little bit more stuff there. But it is time to see how we can improve this team. Now, just looking at the lineup of this team, Kyler Murray, uh, we've got James Conner, Michael Carter is kind of our running backs. Marvin Harrison Jr. and Zay Jones are not a bad one two punch. Marvin Harrison Jr. probably our number one pretty soon. But the offensive line isn't really going to do much to inspire great success here. The interior part of it, not really great here. But I think our tackle situation is OK. Our tight end is going to be in a pretty decent situation with McBride, but I'd like to have another guy behind him. And then in the defensive side of the ball, again, we have Buda Baker, who's a stud. We've got Thompson. We've got Sean Murphy bunting. We've got some guys that can make some things happen, but there's just a lot of low 70 overall players this team. We've got to improve them quick. Now, one of the first things I want to do is go ahead and get a much better running back or probably at least a running back that can dominate in Madden. We're getting Eli Mitchell for Michael Carter, a fifth and a sixth rounder. Mitchell is going to be a much faster running back. We can kind of pair him with James Conner, and that'll be a good one-two punch. Now, everybody knows that T. Higgins is kind of in a situation where he's not happy. The Bengals haven't really given him the long-term contract, but in Arizona, we will absolutely give you the money that he wants. So we're going after T. Higgins. We're going to give up a first, a fifth, and a seventh rounder the first this year, fifth and seventh next year. That will get us T. Higgins, and we still got some stuff to work with. We also want to upgrade our number two corner, so we're going to try to get Jeff Okuda for Jaden Davis, Cameron Thomas, and a sixth round pick in 2026, and we're going to see what the Texans say to that. They are almost there. We want to go ahead and upgrade our number two corner spot, so we're going to get Jeff Okuda from the Texans for Jaden Davis, a young corner, Cam Thomas, another young outside linebacker, and a fourth round pick in 2026, again, giving some younger assets to help build this super team. We're also going to pick up Robert Tanyan for a 2027 fourth round pick and a 2025 seventh round pick. Again, getting a older tight end to really help build out this team. One thing I want to build as well is an edge rusher, and we can actually go ahead and get Aiden Hutchinson for a second rounder in 2026, a fourth in 2025, and a seventh in 2027. We will make that trade every single day of the week. We're going after one big receiving target in Raheed Shaheed because we need to make sure that we have somebody else out there. We can probably trade Zay Jones now so that Marvin Harrison is a true number two. But I like what we got in Raheed Shaheed. And so with that, we put Zay Jones on the trade block and we kind of see a couple of different options that come up for him. There's Mercedes Lewis, who I cannot still believe is actually in the NFL. But as we work our way through, I see Kyer Elam from the Buffalo Bills, a young corner with a solid depth trade and a seventh rounder for Zay Jones. I'm willing to make that deal. That's an upgrade for us. So looking at our actual team now, we've increased our overall from a 75 to a 77. We have T. Higgins. We have Marvin Harrison Jr. We have Raheed Shahid behind him. We have Pascal there as well. Kyler still our quarterback. Elijah Mitchell is our main running back. James Conner moving over to fullback. I feel like we're pretty good there. The offensive line, there's some issues, but I think we'll be okay for the most part here. Defense, we got Aiden Hutchinson there to help out our struggling defensive line. We have Murphy Bunding, we have Jeff Okuda, and then we have Kyer Elam behind him. So again, there's some major pieces, but I still feel like we're missing a big splash. And so to make that big splash, we go to another rebuilding team, the Denver Broncos. We're already trying to get rid of Patrick Sertan from the rumors we saw in the offseason. We're going to give up a first, a second, another first, a third, and a sixth rounder. But we have a lockdown corner now. And then one of the last moves we're going to make, especially on defense, is going to be signing Justin Simmons, who to this point in IRL has not signed to a team. So Justin Simmons, welcome to Arizona. OK, I lied. One of the last ones we're making is Bryce Huff from the Eagles is on the trade block. They're trying to get rid of him from a cap situation. We have Elijah Wilkinson, a right guard who they are needing. So we will absolutely make this trade. Thank you, Philly. 
With those moves out of the way, I feel like we've really put a super team around Kyler. The offensive line has been improved. We did get rid of our starting left guard, but we got a really good edge rusher. I think these guys should be pretty solid for the most part across the board. Having Tanya and McBride there gives us, again, a really cool set that we can have with two tight ends. Higgins and Marvin Harrison Jr., Kyler, Elijah Murray, Elijah Mitchell. This feels like a good offense, but the defense is where I'm the most excited right now because we have Justin Simmons on one side, Buda Baker on the other, Saving Collins, Barnes, White, Ojulari across the middle of our linebackers. We have Patrick Sertan as our number one corner with Murphy Bunting, Okuda, and Kyer Elam there. And then having Hutchinson and Bryce Huff on the defensive line. This feels like we really upgraded this team a lot. Now we head down here to the practice field and it looks like we're gonna have our very first player meeting and it's Aiden Hutchinson coming to us says, coach, my agent's been telling me that my personality can be a problem sometimes. There may be some truth to that. You know, maybe it's what Jonathan Gannon saying here, but Aiden says, be honest with me, I know I'm obsessed with my brand and socials all the time. Did you change that about me? This is kind of a tough one. So we don't want you to change. We want you to be more intense. We want you to be more of a team player. We want you to be more of a leader. Uh, I'm gonna say we don't want you to change. So I don't want you to change. Let's see how Aiden Hutchison responds to it. He says, thanks coach, I really appreciate that. Hopefully that translates to good play on the field. So we actually get some trust earned here with this player by accepting who he is. His morale has increased by absolutely 20. You love to see it. And we do get a little heads up from our offensive coordinator that they're asking about maybe some position battles coming this week. So we, at least we have that on our radar. And from there, we head straight into the press conference. And you should be having a left end position battle according to most experts. Which stat will determine the winner of the battle between Aiden Hutchison and Bilal Nichols? Uh, I'm going to say there will not be a battle because we are starting Aiden Hutchison no matter what at this point. Like, Hutchison's our starter. We got to go with our guy right here. So interesting. I doubt that'll go over well in the locker room. You lost your players' trust in your players lost trust in you because you didn't allow players to fight for the job. Morale dropped by 10. Well, it's one way to start the year. Now, an issue we have is that Jalen Thompson is behind Justin Simmons right now. We don't really need Jalen Thompson, even though he's a very good player. We want to try to get something for him right now. So we're gonna go ahead and throw up some offers for him and see what we kind of get. The Ryan Kelly one is really interesting because we could maybe boost our center position, but it won't be by a little bit. I do think though, after looking through this, Devin Lloyd probably makes the most sense. Van Ginkle's another guy that can make a lot of sense here, but I like the addition of getting Devin Lloyd. He's a guy that gets 100 plus tackles every single season, could fit really well with what we're doing here in Arizona and gives us good speed and middle linebackers. So we're gonna pull the trigger and make that trade. So Patrick Sertan comes to us as well and says, the athletic trainer told me to ask you about what you want me to work on during camp. Should we focus more on injury prevention or improving my stamina so I don't really wear down over the season? Uh, I think we're gonna focus on conditioning and stamina for him. Not really a guy I expect to get injured a lot. So conditioning is really where we want him to spend his time. He's gonna get his stamina increased by three, which should be pretty ma major for our team. So with all these trades, all the different pieces that kind of moved around on our squad, we've got an opportunity to see just how good we are against the Buffalo Bills week one. Let's see what we got. So Kyler Murray and the squad come out here, ready to see if they can get something on the scoreboard right now. This is gonna be our first look at our new running back and Mitchell's gonna go for a couple. Well, second and goal, Kyler, a lot of time. Doesn't like what he has here. Kyler scrambling. Kyler turning the corner and Kyler Murray in the end zone. A quick little lead for Arizona. Kyler and the Cardinals get back into the red zone here. It's a tie game though. Buffalo is able to get seven points in the road here. Kyler takes his time. Sees Marvin Harrison. A nice little zig route. He's going to get it down about the eight yard line. The rain keeps coming down. Kyler's the only guy in shotgun here with an empty set. Sees the blitz. He throws it where it is. And Marvin Harrison Jr. His first NFL touchdown. You love to see it. Buffalo's been cooking though. They got a three point lead here late in the third. Kyler tries to step up in the pocket, but they're going to get him pretty quickly after two. Third quarter winding down. Kyler going to keep this one. Kyler needs something, a spin move, a double spin move, maybe even three spin moves to make it third and five. This is a big one. Third down, five yards to go. Kyler having a pretty solid game so far. Looks to be maybe a penalty there. We're going to find out what it is here in a second, but we're going to see if Marvin Harrison Jr. gets his second touchdown or if something else happened to happen there. Defense all sides. Arizona takes the lead again. But as good as this team has been, it all really comes down to this. You have second down, inches to go. Your team is down. Kyler feels the pressure, tries to get rid of one, and it goes empty. A major third down with inches to go. They're going to opt to run it. It was the right move as Elijah Mitchell gets a big gain nearly to the red zone. Two minute warnings approaching. Kyler with a check down. Smart play. Mitchell's going to get nearly about five or six. Second down and three yards to go. Kyler is here, throws one of the back of the end zone and it's over the top of Marvin Harrison Jr. Third down, three yards to go. 
They've got Harrison, and Harrison should have the first down. Kyler, three touchdowns through the air, one on the ground so far today. He's going to send Mitchell back out there to an empty set. Buffalo looks to be blitzing. Kyler feels the pressure. Kyler throws one on the run, and it's wide of his target. Clock does stop. Marvin Harrison Jr. has been killing it. He's in the end zone again. Arizona has the lead with a minute 24 left. Game is on the line. Josh Allen under center now. Buffalo needs two yards on fourth down to keep this game alive, and they're going to get the yards they need. Arizona cannot give up a touchdown here. This is a big play. White's going to move out to the edge. They throw to the sideline. They're going to get their guy nearly for a first and out of bounds. They've done a really good job of stopping the clock as much as they can. They throw one in the end zone, and that was going to be picked off. Patrick Sertan, the biggest acquisition in the offseason, is going to make the play to win the game. So Arizona is going to escape with a 34-30 to victory on the road in inclement weather. And Josh Allen, he's missing Stephon Diggs right now. The team started off incredibly hot, winning their first five games. But then they dropped their last two against Green Bay and the Chargers. And they have a very tough game against Miami right now. Let's see if they can pull it off. Things are getting pretty bad right now, though. We've got two and company at third and one. Set a man in motion. We've got Lloyd and company needing to get a stop. And we get a big hit on Tua bringing him down. So with a little over four minutes left. Miami's going to line up for a field goal here. This would give them a 13 to 6 lead, which would give them a 7 point plus. We got our work cut out for us on offense. Kyler out here in shotgun, knowing his team has got to come up with a big play here. He's going to test one deep. He's got Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. is in the end zone. That is going to give this game back to being a tie. Miami didn't really do anything on offense, so it's back to Arizona having the rock with a chance to take the lead in this game. And Elijah Mitchell with the run that could have went for a lot more. Two minute morning hits. Kyler and company. Looking for something, they find the man that has been having a great season so far, Marvin Harrison Jr. Clock keeps tipping. Another big catch, but he drops it. The good news, it does stop the clock, but it's just not a situation you were expecting to have. You used to that guy catching so many passes, and look at T. Higgins losing a little stamina, but he gets the first down. A little over a minute left, first and ten. Harrison is going to make the toe tap on the sideline. And look, the kicker's trying to see Prater. Been around the league for a long time. He needs us to get to the 42-yard line. Kyler trying to prove that he could be an MVP in this league. So a lot of people not put enough respect on his name, but he's out here dealing right now as T. Higgins gets another grab. We're going to use our first timeout. First and 10, Mitchell's going to go out to the right-hand side. Murray, the only guy in the backfield again. Take the quick ones. Let Raheem Shahid do what he does best. Take the drag in for a first down and gets out of bounds. The team is essentially in range for Matt Prater, but they want more. Kyler drops it off to Tanya, and Tanya's going to get a big catch there using our second timeout. That was actually going to be Miami that uses their timeout there, so we still have two. Kyler again feels good. Nice little drop off here. Trey McBride doesn't get a lot of play time right now, and he gets a nice one. In Arizona, again, a slower offensive game here in Miami. It's been a tough one. The defense has definitely done their job. Kyler sees his guy. He's going to find Tanya again. Tanya's going to get the first down, but makes a huge price for it. Under 30 seconds left in the game. Kyler throws one to Mitchell. He looks for the blocks, and Elijah Mitchell's in the end zone. Arizona has the lead with under 20 seconds left. It's up to two and company to see if they can actually get enough here. Two, a lot of time, throws one, and Simmons can't make the stop. Miami has got a really good spot now. Odell Beckham Jr. making the play of this half so far. Putting his team in a really good spot. Tua scrambling, throws one. He's going to get a guy, but six seconds left now. Can we get a final stop here against Miami? They go for a check down play. That's going to go to Tyreek. Tyreek is inside of the 10, and he's going to go down. Miami is going to lose on a last second play in Arizona. He's back in the win column. And this team halfway through is looking incredibly good. The team has been improving a ton, but they hit us up with a team meeting room in week 15 as we're sort of 10 and 3, approaching a pretty big game here. And coach says, let's talk about our opponents' weaknesses this week. So I asked you all to watch film and analyze their defense, and hopefully some people did their homework here. But what did you see? We can beat their corners. They're not that good, is what Kyler Murray's going to tell us. That's our captain. So we got to figure out, okay, that's good, but 
which corner are we talking about in this situation? And Christian Gonzalez is the guy that Kyler wants to target. That is their number one corner. He's saying, well, so how should we actually attack him? Kyler comes back and says, it makes sense to target that corner to get the ball to our best receiver as much as possible. Let's see T. Higgins get plenty of catches. I agree. We should be in that man involved. So coach says, good. We'll be successful if T. Higgins has eight catches or T. Higgins has two receiving touchdowns. Ooh, I like this. I'm going to say eight catches. So we feed T. the ball early and often. And that's how we get the W. And there's the man we're doing a whole lot of targeting to today. T. Higgins, only 42 grabs in the year, only two receiving touchdowns. You gotta get him involved early and often. So we find ourselves in a pretty big third down and two yard situation right now. T. Higgins over there on the edge. I think we're gonna kind of try to target him, but we might have Harrison here in that drag route. And Harrison's gonna be the guy we immediately go to. Marvin Harrison and T. Higgins. That is an embarrassment of riches for Kyler. Kyler seeing man press over there on T. Higgins. His guy has a chance, and that one is blocked. So we're going to opt to go for this one on fourth down. We obviously could kick the field goal, but we've been killing them across these little dumb passes, so we continue that. Second down, six yards to go. We're going to go up to T. Higgins. That's our best receiver, and he shows why. What a grab by T. Higgins. Second quarter underway. We got some time here. And we throw a pick. He's waiting for that great interception. New England gets the ball right back. But just before the two-minute warning approaches, we've got an opportunity here. A nice ball that goes right back to T. Higgins. Squad back in the red zone. Under two minutes now. We have a four-point lead. We just want to make sure we don't turn it over again like earlier. Kyler feels the pressure. Kyler again, dangerous in the open field. He shows it here again as he gets the first down. There's not been a lot of love for the Kyler for MVP conversation. We're trying to change that today as Marvin Harrison gets another touchdown reception this year. Arizona find themselves in a dog fight. T Higgins again, so close. This is a close game. A field goal is not really going to do much for us. Coach wants to go heading up. See if we can get that first down. Kyler stretching the play, throws one to Harrison. Harrison grabs that one, but I think there might be a holding call on this play, which could change a lot for Arizona. They call offensive holding. Harris Johnson, you got to do better. So a big field goal. We're going to see if we can get this one to go. It's going to be close. It's hooking right, but it's just enough distance on that one. And Prater puts it through to extend our lead, but is it going to be enough? A four-point lead. Arizona's in the driver's seat. New England, again, a team that's trying to get into the playoffs right now. But we have got to find a way to get this first down. Kyler here, third and five, sees this guy. He's going to find Shahid who gets hit, but he's going to get down for the first. Kyler back under center with the squad in the red zone. He's going to see his guy. Who else but T. Higgins, who's been having a monster game so far. Back in the end zone again. That catch for T. Higgins was number seven on the ball game, so he does need one more to put himself in the spot that he wants to be in. Drake May goes down. Arizona gets the rock right back. So a crucial third down. Two-minute warning again looming across the middle is T. Higgins. He says, I want that eighth catch. New England burns another timeout, but again, Arizona trying to put more points on the board. That's what they came here to do today. Kyler scrambling, running out of room, and gets out of bounds a second and five. Last play before the two-minute warning. Kyler goes to keep it and gets lit up by Matthew Judon. So Arizona... Right before the two minute warning, because there was a timeout called there. It's got a chance to try to put more points on the board. They go to Marvin Harrison Jr., who's been turning up all season long, and he's approaching double digit touchdowns on the season. This man is having a great rookie campaign. And Arizona gets a very important win. T. Higgins' morale has got to be going through the roof right now, and you don't know if New England's going to be in the playoffs now. So after the game, Kyler Murray says, Nice to get that win. I agree. And we did a good job of exploiting their corners, and we got the win. Great game plan. And look, coach is just saying, I give you all the credit, Kyler. This was all you. So that means that our wide receivers earned 2,500 XP for exploiting the opposing secondary. You love to see it. So from an MVP standpoint, Kyler does not finish in the top three. He doesn't even finish actually in the top at all. But you know what? This team is in the playoffs, and they are trying to make a run. And let's see if they can actually go win the Super Bowl. The first matchup we're going to have is going to be Kyler Murray versus Brock Purdy in the NFC wildcard. Debo Samuel's there, but we don't care. After San Fran can't do anything, Arizona deep in their own territory right now, but they've got a man out here running, and it's Marvin Harrison Jr. who's going to hold that one in and goes down. Maybe we're not seeing any respect put on Kyler Murray for, you know, what he did this season, but we're watching him dotted up here in the playoffs as Raheem Shahid is going to get down about the 20. 
Kyler again with a chance. He's got Marvin Harrison Jr. underneath. Marvin. It's a nice juke. He's up for after eight. Second is short. Kyler hits him with the pump fake. Across the middle. It's Marvin, but he has a rare drop. On a major third down play, they're going right back to Mitchell. Trying to find a way. Fred Warner's there. There is going to be a flag on the play. We're going to see if that ultimately comes to B, but we're hoping it's against the defense. It's on the offense. So things become dramatically more tough on a third down and 11. But Kyler sees his favorite target, and he overthrows him. Harrison was wide open. So it's going to be a field goal now for Arizona. They've been pretty good at these so far this year, and Prater's going to put it right down the middle. A 3-0 lead. San Fran kind of holding on to the lead right now. Just barely. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to go get one, though, in the corner of the end zone. What a play. The rookie showing up big in the playoffs. Deep here in the fourth, though, San Fran has it tied up. Kyler feeling like he can maybe get the first down. He gets hit hard, and they say he has it. The Jonathan Gannon offense is looking so good right now. Kyler's going to step up. He's got an opportunity to get in the end zone, and Kyler's going to use his legs and get into the end zone. Arizona with the lead with 2.46 on the clock. Brock Purdy and the 49ers got an opportunity here to try to make something happen. They go immediately to Christian McCaffrey, and why would you not? The best player on the team. Linebacker's getting tested a little bit right now. San Fran feeling good. They throw one, though, and it's way out of bounds. Devin Lloyd patrolling the middle here. They go with a nice pass. That was going to be held on to. Arizona knows they have an opportunity to potentially win this game if they can lock up right here. McCaffrey slides way out. They go down the middle, and Simmons, the free agent signing. In the last week of preseason, Justin Simmons is going to get the interception. He's going to try to take it to the house. I don't know if he has enough speed here, and Simmons is going to steal the deal. And this super team built around Kyler Murray continues to show. Maybe Kyler doesn't have to be an MVP candidate. If everybody else is playing like this, this team is inching closer to the Super Bowl one week at a time. We pick up here in the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, and it looks like somehow the Cowboys have won a game past January. Everyone in the world is surprised, but Kyler Murray right now is trying to step up for his team. Kyler looking kind of crazy right now. Kyler Murray down to the eight. Unreal play by Kyler. He's obviously still reeling from that a little bit. He's going to put his man in motion. Elijah Mitchell out to the right-hand side. This Cowboys team a little bit shocked at just how fast Kyler Murray is. But this is a big game for him going back to play the team from his home state. But there's a penalty on the play. Roughing the passer. We'll accept that. Dallas with a little bit of a weaker front. We're going to see Elijah Mitchell into the end zone. And Arizona takes the lead right back to go up seven. Dallas find themselves struggling a little bit. The pressure is on Kyler, and he goes down for a big loss. So Coach is going to opt to kick one here, but there's seven mile an hour winds blowing right back in their face. This one, it's got maximum effort, and that one is down the middle. A 10-point lead now for Arizona after Prater drills that one from deep. Dallas looks like they're going forward here in fourth and one. They're going to send a man in motion. They're trying to get pressure on Dal Dak Prescott, but he throws one. His receiver doesn't see it, and Arizona gets the ball back. When not a lot of time after McCarthy's gamble didn't pay off, Arizona has an opportunity to put more points back on the board and extend this lead. A close one, and that was just sent directly to Diggs. He picks that one off easy. Dallas obviously has done really well so far after that play. They got the nice turnover with Diggs. They ended up scoring, but they're trying to find something here. Dak Prescott goes down. A big hit by Zayvon Collins. A great stop by the defense. Means the offense has a little bit of time to shine. And what a hit. Looks like Parsons off the edge, potentially. Coach Gannon decides to go for here. We have one fourth down conversion already. Can we get another one? With only a three-point lead in this game. This would be major. Dallas not really sending anybody. But we're going to go right to Harrison, our most reliable target. And he has it. As good as Kyler has been mostly on the ground today, he's had a really bad game in the air. Only 86 passing yards through the air so far. Mitchell's going to take this play to the end zone, and that's going to extend our lead to 10. Not a lot of time left for Dallas. Dallas finds himself in a tough spot, down 10. They need something. They go underneath, and on fourth and nine, that goes nowhere. Dallas is going to be out of the playoffs. Dallas' season is going to end. Kyler and the Cardinals continue the journey to the Super Bowl. Arizona has been really fortunate to be in a good spot in a lot of these games, but here on the road, their first time being on the road in the playoffs, they're down 21 nothing, and it's not looking good. Kyler feels the pressure. He's going to step up. Kyler with an opportunity to get into the end zone, and Kyler is going to take matters into his own hands. Arizona's down a lot, though. Now 
19 seconds left in one timeout here in the first half. And Kyler goes down in a major way. As bad as this game has been for Arizona, they are still technically in it right now. Kyler's here. He sees the blitz. He's got a guy deep. He's trying to find Higgins. And Higgins is going to dive and catch it. This is back to a 10-point game. Arizona's in a tough situation right now. They're facing a super team of their own. Philly, Saquon Barkley, Jalen Hurts, the wide receiver core. They are loaded from top to bottom. And Saquon trying to show what he can do right here as he gets down to about the nine. Under four minutes left in this game, a touchdown would be pretty detrimental. Philly throws one and is picked off by Murphy Bunning. Arizona's still in the game. Down big in this game, fourth quarter. You got to score and you got to score quick. Kyler throws one off his back foot and it goes fall. Second down and 10, deep in their own territory right now. Marvin Harrison has been cooking and he continues to cook here as he fights down the field. Arizona trying to switch their plays up a little bit here. Murray's going to find Marvin again, back to back plays. He's going to smartly get out of bounds with 309 left. Harrison's going to come out here. He's been doing a lot this game. We're going to find the tight end. Robert Tanya is going to get the first and he gets out of bounds. Arizona absolutely still in this game right now. Kyler Murray sees him dropping heavy back in coverage. He's going to get the first down and slides. Kyler again out here. Throws one in. It's going to be wild. They're doing a really good job of getting down the field quick, but they need to score if they're going to still have a shot at this game. Murray's here. He's scrambling. Throws one, and luckily it stops the clock. Only two third down conversions the entire game. This has been a bit of a nightmare for Arizona. They throw one, and Mitchell drops it fourth and ten. Arizona's going to opt to go ahead and actually kick this one because as long as they make it, it is still only a seven-point game, which keeps them in it. So Arizona's going to opt to kick this one down the field because you don't need to do an onside kick. You have plenty of time, three timeouts, and a two-minute warning. Jalen and company are going to line up here in an empty set. This is probably not exactly what Arizona had expected. They go for the quick pass. That one's going to be not a first down. Things getting spicy. They're going to opt to run. We did call a timeout just before the two-minute warning, and all of a sudden, now it's third and one. Hurst is going to send Barkley out. And he's got the first down. At least second and 11. They're going to opt to run an actual play here as the clock winds all the way down. We've got our guys there. It's a good stop. And the final kneel down is pretty much all she wrote. They don't have to punt it away. So Philly does decide to actually punt it. The only way to get this is going to be a return for a touchdown. And it's not going to happen. Arizona will lose. It was a heck of an effort to get this team. The super team was built. But Philly was just too good in the end. That 21-0 lead really hurt Arizona, but I am proud of this squad. Kyler Murray with the right pieces around him brought this team to an NFC championship. Was it good enough to get the W? No. But still... This team is looking great. Safety smart. Tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one.